is there such a thing as the best playmaking role in the game? So I decided to do a private live stream yesterday and uh, run a few experiments along the way, create a few tactics. And today I'm going to bring you the results. We're going to find out whether there is such a thing as the best playmaker in the game. For this little experiment, we use Fabian. He plays for Napoli and we use them in two roles, the DLP and the roaming playmaker within a 4-3-3 system. So in terms of performances, I also looked at his statistics like pass completion numbers, whether he was creating goal scoring chances to do that. You look at key passes per 90. And finally, assists. Does he contribute to any goals? I also remember in previous editions of the game, poor ratings for that DM position and I wanted to find out if uh, we could improve those numbers. The first version of our 4-3-3 was pretty safe. Um, a DLP on defend with wingbacks on support, uh, two ball playing defenders behind him, uh, central midfield on attack, a poacher in front. Now this is a pretty safe 4-3-3. It's not too risky. In such a 4-3-3, you will see the DLP on defense acting very much like a protector of the back line. you got two ball-playing defenders here. The ball-playing defenders probably won't venture past the DLP because the DLP is a playmaker and they will look to release the ball to him. So you won't find these ball-playing defenders being too adventurous on the ball. Uh, Wingbacks bombing down the flanks, yeah, but they're also not on attack duty with the exception of perhaps the wingback on the right who's on an underlap, but he's on the same flank with another support duty, so this shouldn't put too much risk on the system. We put this tactic in, we made sure Fabian was playing in every single game or we tried to by, you know, telling the assistant manager to make sure that he was being selected in that position we want him to play and we waited for the results. To test this tactic out, I applied it to the Total Tactics save. Now, you can get the save from the Total Tactics Discord. The links to that Discord are in the description of this video. Now, the results were not bad. I mean, I would suggest think that I would think that these results are pretty good. Uh, it's a safe tactic. It did well in the Underdog League, which is expected. If it's a good tactic, you should always win there. And against... Uh, Teams of a similar quality, This that's the balanced teams league. It finished top of the table. Um, in a average league that you might find across Europe, it finished second, which is also a pretty decent result. And in the elite teams league, now this is a league which is where Dapoli is the underdog. Now naturally, we don't expect it to win because that would make this an insanely good tactic if it was able to finish in the top two of every single league. There, it finished in a very humble sixth position, which is, suggests that this tactic fundamentally is safe, it's solid, it's not spectacular. To assess the performance of the playmaker, I only took numbers from the balance league. So here, Fabian's numbers were pretty solid, not spectacular. Average rating of 7.14 creates like 1.12 key passes a game. I mean, fullback is too better than that. So we can expect the DLP, well, you know, it's just one chance a game. It's not bad, it's not spectacular. But it does suggest that the DLP was more of a link-up player. Looking at his past completion numbers, they are very high, 93%, which suggests that this is a safe role. So the next thing I wanted to do, simple, change that role from a DLP to a roaming playmaker. How much of a difference would that make to the tactic? I was having a chat with one of the developers, and uh, he suggested that sometimes even the slight change of a role can have a massive impact on your tactic. And... This is a very good example of one. When I used the DLP, the tactic did better against teams of a similar standard and who are weaker. But when I used the roaming playmaker, the tactic suddenly did better against top sides. But you know, against teams of a similar standard or who are weaker, well, it did well, it just didn't win the leagues. Statistically, it would suggest that the roaming playmaker was doing a bit more in terms of trying to create chances. His pass completion numbers were just a bit lower. He did looked like he was creating a few more key passes during a game. And it would seem to suggest that the use of a roaming playmaker comes with some risk. He is involved in a few more attacks. But your team uh, might not be solid defensively. Simply changing a DLP for a roaming playmaker wasn't the solution. We needed to change a few of the roles around to extract the best out of the roaming playmaker. In came the inverted wingback and... Out went the overlap and the underlap. We also adjusted the defensive line and the line of engagement. And I ran the simulation one more time. 
the final version of this tactic turned out to be the best version of the night. Uh, in the Elite League, it finished top, suggesting that it could do really well against top sides. Uh, against teams of a similar caliber, it also finished quite high up the league in the second position. And in the Balanced Teams League, which is a reflection of any normal league, it finished second. And against underdogs, it finished top of the table. Now, this suggested to me that this was a solid version of the system. I do like roaming playmakers on Football Manager, but you need to be careful when you use that role. Here we've got a roaming playmaker. He's sitting pretty deep. He's helping um, with the defensive transition. But roaming playmakers themselves, they end up swapping positions. Here you can see the roaming playmaker has moved from his central position and he's actually moved into the central midfielder's position. Now remember, he was sitting in the DM position, but he's changed positions right at this phase of the play. Now this is important to remember because whenever you use roaming playmakers, you need players around him who also have good teamwork work rate, concentration and anticipation. Now you can see he's changed, he swapped positions entirely with this guy. He's got the Sandro Tonali is actually dropped into the DM position when the roaming playmaker has taken over his position. So whenever you use roaming playmakers, this is something to bear in mind. Now not every single team will be able to pull this off. As you can see, he's now further up. He keeps shifting around. Okay. And then he will eventually move into his position. You can see the amount of roaming he's doing at the moment. He's gone from one end of the pitch. He's moved into the center where he's trying to help the team out defensively. He's chosen the best position to be in. Whenever a player has roamed from position as a play instruction, you can expect that player to swap positions with another one. Uh, if the players all have decent teamwork around them. Here, the roaming playmaker is back here in his you know specific position the inverted wing back is over here he's got a solid support structure around him and the team tries to create another goal scoring opportunity here once again you can see another transition where the roaming playmakers end up very high up the pitch he's trying to close down the opposition another player has taken his spot he now gets back into some kind of a position but he's taking part in the attacking transition as the team shifts his gears this is something that we have to pay attention to during the course of a game I love using the roaming playmaker. However, whenever I use a roaming playmaker, I'm looking at the rest of the team. I'm looking to see whether any other player is good enough to, you know, sit in his position when he goes wandering. Now here we have got a tactic. I've got a Mazala, who's also a roaming role. And I've got a roaming playmaker. That's another roaming role. Now a lot of people are going to get very angsty using these two in combination. But I don't mind so long as I have players around who are willing to pick up the slack. Now, the ball-playing defenders are being used in this kind of a tactic because they're going to push up and encourage this roaming playmaker also to push up higher up the pitch when we have possession of the ball. We are using an inverted wing back on support who becomes like a second DM in this position when we have the ball. This is a, a tactic that if I wanted to use such a tactic, the Mazala has to be a player that can also play as a DM because when you play a roaming playmaker, there's a strong possibility they might end up shifting and swapping into each other's positions. More importantly, when the roaming playmaker enters the Mazala's position, he will start playing like a Mazala as well. He will end up in the half spaces. So you want to make sure that both players, if you're going to use a roaming playmaker in a 4-3-3, you got to make sure that there are players out there who can also play as a DM in case they swap positions. So if you're going to use a roaming playmaker in your tactic, then it's very apparent you need two good DMs in that tactic. You need two players who are capable of shifting in and out of that position. And if you don't have players like that, then the safer bet would be to use a DLP. Because the DLP becomes a safer option for your tactic if you don't have such players in your team. It's a safer role to use. So whenever you go into a game, which is better, the roaming playmaker or the DLP, it will depend entirely on the kind of team that you have. If I had a really good team, I'm always more likely to prefer the roaming playmaker if I know that I have players who can swap in and out of the position. But if my team as a whole, does, don't, I don't have too many players like that, then I'm more likely to play a DLP. Here I'll play a role that's safer, holds this position. I don't expect him to be swapping in and out with other roles. Then I'm safe in the knowledge that I can push those other roles high up the pitch. I can then uh, have a safer tactic using a DLP. Now, I hope you found today's video useful and you enjoyed it. Now, if you have any more questions, you guys know where to find me. I stream three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays on BTN Live. Of course, 
we do those uh, Twitch streams called Fantasy Draft Moments of Magic. <laughs> well, of course, I also stream three times. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show and found it useful. If you have any questions, you guys know where to find me. Leave me a note in the comments below if you want me to focus in on any more roles on Football Manager. Once again, I stream three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, all on BTN Live. We're doing the Palermo project. And occasionally, we'll do a random stream where I do random stuff, where I do random stuff with tactics. Yes. And uh, before I waffle on, you guys stay safe, take care of each other. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.